Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve. So is the trans movement at war with Christians? Well, according to Tucker Carlson, yes. And he isn't mincing words. We're going to take a look at exactly what Tucker had to say. And we're going to see what's really happening in our culture and in our nation. You are not going to want to miss this. Tucker Carlson was on fire last night and he gave what many believe to be perhaps his most important monologue ever on what he called the increasing militancy of parts of the transgender movement. Several days back, Tucker pointed to a disturbing piece from the far leftists at NPR who are normally devout advocates of gun control, but not when it comes to trans people. They highlighted approvingly how more and more trans people were arming themselves to defend against what they perceived were ominous threats from the far right. Anti-trans rhetoric makes the trans community carry guns. Rainbow reload! They're packing heat. There'll be appendix carrying in more ways than one. Watch out. Wait a second, we thought. This is NPR? National Public Radio? Suddenly telling you that actually guns are good. They're valuable tools of self-defense really against you. The Biden administration hired a kid to oversee nuclear waste disposal whose only qualification was his sexual fetishes. So no, there's not genocide going on. There's some weird affirmative action program going on. But if you listen to NPR, you wouldn't know that. And that kind of talk might scare the heck out of you. And if they encourage you to go get a gun and arm yourself because Nazis are taking over Vermont, you might do it. Again, worse for guns as you could possibly be. But this seems like an incitement. Now, we now know that such an assessment has turned out to be rather prophetic. But of course, the far left couldn't see that. Ironically, right after his broadcast, the far leftists over the Daily Beast excoriated Tucker for calling out the calls to arm trans people as a dangerous incitement. They literally mocked him for that. Well, here we are. And in Tucker's monologue last night, he didn't mince words. Anger that we heard in that NPR segment. Why are some trans people so angry and why do they seem to be mad specifically at traditional Christians? We can't think of any trans person who's ever been murdered by a pastor. As far as we know, that has never happened. So it's not an actual threat of violence from Christians that's inspiring some trans people to buy AR-15s. No, it's it's gotta be more fundamental than that. And it is. The trans movement is the mirror image of Christianity and therefore its natural enemy. In Christianity, the price of admission is admitting that you're not God. Christians openly concede that they have no real power over anything, and for that matter, very little personal virtue. They will tell you to your face that they are sinful and helpless and basically absurd. They're not embarrassed about any of this. They brag about it. That saved a wretch like me, goes the most famous Christian hymn ever written in English. The trans movement takes the opposite view. Trans ideology claims dominion over nature itself. We can change the identity we were born with, they will tell you with wild-eyed certainty. Christians can never agree with this statement because these are powers they believe God alone possesses. Now, Tucker's observations on the Christian's absolute reliance on the grace and mercy of God was corroborated by the statement issued the other day by the pastor of Covenant Presbyterian Church, whose nine-year-old daughter was one of the six victims. Speaking of his daughter, he said, quote, Through tears, we trust that she is in the arms of Jesus, who will raise her to life once again. Those incredibly powerful words as we approach the glories of Easter and Christ's resurrection from the dead. But I think Tucker was also right. The trans movement represents something very different from this, what he called the mirror image of Christianity. The trans movement rejects the Christian notion that we are all obligated to conform our lives into a harmonious relationship with the divine meaning and purpose inherent in the cosmic order, that we've all fallen short of that obligation, and that Christ heals that rupture. No, the trans movement is rooted in a radical vision of liberalism, where we're all reinterpreted as sovereign, autonomous individuals who are under no moral obligations apart from that which we choose to impose on ourselves. But what we have to understand is that all secular movements, including the trans movement, nevertheless retain the notion of sanctity, 
the notion that their worldview, their movement, their vision of self and reality is absolute non-negotiable. And as such, all perceived threats to that sacred reality are considered profane, literally sacrilegious and worthy of being suppressed. And this, I believe, is what is at the heart of what's happening in our nation. When all is said and done, the historic Christian culture that we shared and that held our nation together since its founding has, of course, waned. That's hardly controversial. The problem is that the increasingly secular multiculturalism that since replaced Christianity has virtually no basis for a common culture. Again, this is widely recognized. Liberal multicultural societies provoke unsustainable levels of lowering social trust. Studies are showing that societies that are basically unicultural, that is united by a single dominant culture, tend to foster high degrees of social trust, while societies that are basically multicultural tend to exemplify low levels of social trust. A very interesting study came out of Sweden that surveyed interpersonal trust among the Swedish population between the years 2014 and 2017, before and after the refugee crisis of 2015. Sweden per capita received more immigrants than any other nation in Europe. And what they found is that the faith that Swedes had in their institutions and in their neighbors decreased significantly in 20 of 33 municipalities. That's 60% 60, 60 of their municipalities. The study found a very clear converse relationship in that the more refugees in a particular municipality, the lower the trust. So how does this relate to Tucker's observations? Well, that is exactly what we're going to find out. But first, gang, you got to click on that link below and try for yourself the new technology behind MyPillow 2.0. It's amazing. Mike Lindell has absolutely outdone himself with a new fabric temperature regulating technology that keeps you comfortable all throughout the night. You're going to love it. I know I do. And you know, you get the same amazing savings as always if you use promo code TURLY. A classic MyPillow is normally $69.98, but if you use promo code TURLY, you'll get that same classic MyPillow for just $19.98. And that applies to over 200 products in their catalog. So gang, don't way click on that link below and give the gift of comfort and warmth to yourself to your loved ones support one of america's most amazing patriots and get the best savings ever click on that link below right now as social trust has eroded in our nation due to our increased secularization we've been increasingly characterized by what scholars call resentment politics it's also called the politics of blame because we no longer trust each other we're frankly beginning to resent each other. And again, this shouldn't surprise us. Culture, after all, is centered on cult. And the cult of a culture is it's sacred. It literally means that which is worshipped, that which is honored and revered. And so it's no surprise that in a secularized, multicultural society, competing sacred systems are going to see each other as profane. And then the most important question of all comes to the fore. How do you treat the other who you consider profane? Christianity has an answer to that. One of the fundamental tenets of Christianity is that we're all profane. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the grace of God. And it is precisely that grace given to us freely in Christ in his transformative death and resurrection that restores and renews us back into the loving embrace of God. But how does the trans movement deal with the profane? Well, the manifesto written by this killer would certainly shed some light on that, which is precisely what Tucker is so concerned about. Within what seemed like minutes, we saw pictures of the rifles and the pistol we now have horrifying body cam footage from within the school, so unsettling, we're not gonna show it to you. But somehow we can't see the manifesto in which the killer explains why she killed. Why is that? It's not accidental. Well, you know exactly why it is. Because it would make the obvious undeniable. The trans movement is targeting Christians, including with violence. Most Christian leaders in this country don't want to admit that, Admitting it might force them to take deeply unfashionable positions. But it is true, and anyone who's paying attention knows that it's true. And so, like most true things at this point, it is officially suppressed. In other words, 
Bringing up the inconvenient truth that the trans movement is at war with Christians is itself considered profane. It's a point of view, an assessment that's not allowed. Our nation is coming unglued. There is no way around that. The secularization that's replaced our common Christian culture doesn't have the basic frames of reference to hold our society together, and as such, we are unraveling. The good news is that there's a demographic revolution going on both here and around the world where conservative religious communities are growing all as secular liberal populations are demographically shrinking. The world is moving in a far more religious conservative direction. I just hope that when that revolution takes full effect to save our nation from this culture degeneration, we'll still have a nation to save. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on France's national rally. There are People's Party surging into first place as President Macron implodes. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to click on the link and I'll see you over there. God bless.